You probably think of Chrome as something that you use to check your emails, stream videos, or maybe even open a dozen tabs you will never read. But what if I told you that the same browser that you use day to day is running on your smart TV, or it's being used to generate PDFs for your invoices, or even better, it's powering the UI on your e-reader. And when something goes wrong, like a vulnerability gets exploited, it's not just going to be your tab that's going to crash, it can also affect that device or the application that you are browsing. So here's the thing. Browsers aren't just being used by people like you and I anymore. They are used in the background, quietly, in all sorts of different places. That fancy PDF download you got from your bank, it might be rendered with a full headless Chrome browser. That HTML interface you see on your smart fridge, probably a browser too. The file preview in your favorite code editor also could be a browser that has been packaged into that application. And when you feed these systems untrusted content like your HTML, your JavaScript, or even better, you upload an XML file, there is a hidden risk. You're letting that browser do something super dangerous on that device. And a prime example of that is CVE 2023-4357, a Chrome XXC that allows an attacker to read local files from that web server or the machine that is running that Google Chrome. By the way, I'm trying something very new here. I'm going to start doing more of my write-ups in the form of a video. If you like this content, drop me the word write-up in the comments. I'm going to read all of them and maybe I'll make more of these videos in the future. All right, let's get back to the video. If you look at it at a first glance, this is just a boring old XXC or XML external entity vulnerability, the kind of issue that lets you trick the XML parser into reading a local file or making network requests. XXC has been around for years. This is nothing new, but here's a twist. This time it happened in the Chrome browser. Someone figured out how to trigger an XXC through the way Chrome handles SVGs. And if you're not familiar with SVGs, these are images written in XML. You can open one up in your text editor and actually read the shapes, colors, and text. It's just code describing a picture. If Chrome is used to parse a certain content, like the XML or the SVG, and it's doing that as a part of its backend workflow, it can actually be exploited to force it into leaking and dumping information that we could be after. And don't worry, I'm going to show you all that in just a sec. Before we jump into the demo, I want to acknowledge something. Yeah, Yes, I know this bug has been around for over a year and I know it's not brand new. And sure, it's probably patched in a lot of the modern web applications by now. That doesn't mean that it's gone forever. I've actually been able to find this in a few live websites, but more importantly, I was able to find this in devices, places where Chrome is being bundled and forgotten about. So this is like your smart displays, your electron apps, embedded systems, stuff that is way harder to keep updated than your average web app. So keep that in mind that a browser bug like this, it's not always going to be in a web app. It could be in a million different in places, you just have to sit down and make a list of all those applications or those devices and find the bug bounty program or the target that you're going after that could be potentially vulnerable. Now, let me show you how this plays out by using a lab that I put together a little while ago for one of my courses. If you're already enrolled, you can access the lab for free and follow along. If not, don't worry about it. You can still watch this video and enjoy the demo right here. And if you want to check it out, I'll put a link down below in the comments. Go check it out and grab it for 50% off. All right, let's jump into our demo now. So let's assume that you have found an area where it allows you to either either render HTML server side or JavaScript server side, or it allows you to put a URL in where we're going to see what the backend system is. Obviously, in this case, we know that we're going after Chrome, but I want to show you how important it is to look for the backend versions before you start to export anything. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to give it a interact.sh URL, and that's going to make a request, and it's going to come back with this specific get request right here, as you can see. And we can see that the user agent here is a headless Chrome version 99.0.4844. This is really important because this CVE specifically only works, I think, from version 116 and down. So if this was like 120 or 121 Chrome version, then obviously this wouldn't work. Then we have to go and look at all the CVEs that affect a Chrome for that specific version and then go on GitHub and see if anybody has a write-up or has created a POC for that CVE. So that's really, really important. The first step should always be this. There is one thing, though. If you've ever seen any of my startup videos, it's really important to know where the request is coming from. If you're going after a web application, the IP address right here in the corner should belong to the web application that we're going after or its backend. But if you're going after a device or some fridge or something that's on your network, then that IP address should belong to you and it should match your IP address as well. Now that we have that out of the way, let's look at our export. So in this case, you can see that I have this POC prepared for it. Obviously, I've commented this for our students so they can understand what's happening. But in short, we are going after an XXC. We're calling a file etc password and assigning it to password C and password P using the system entity here. And then down here, we're going to assign it to expo data and show it in a uh, text area. So it's going to put all the contents of that file within a text box so we can read it properly. And I'm going to explain to you what this part of this script does towards the end of the video. But now we're going to go into here and we are going to 
give it our POC. We're going to open our file and we can see that we can see the contents of the specific box uh, and see the ETC password for it. So that's cool. We have a PDF generator. It shows us a vulnerability. We can extract a content of a file. That's really cool where you're downloading a file, you're downloading a PDF and it's on a server. This could change when you're going after a device because if you can load up an XXE into a device, but how are you going to steal that data? How are you going to steal those local files from the server if it's just being shown to you in the browser? That's where the second part right here it comes into play. And shout out to my buddies then. We did this together on Discord one night when I was hacking. But what I'm doing here is I'm just getting the contents of our expo data and then just sending it back to our server so we can have it. So even if this exploit works blindly or if it works on a device, we can steal that data and send it back to us. This is really, really important because if you hack someone's e-reader, you maybe you get them to click on a link on their e-reader somehow, and this exploit works, you are not going to be able to see the contents of that ETC password unless you have this last bit. So this is really, really important. And we'll talk about that in just a bit. And now if we go to our server and I grab for POC expo, you can see that it's also sending the content of our ETC password right here as well so that's just to show you how this exploit works but now we got to talk about the twenty thousand dollar bounty that i mentioned in the thumbnail in this case i was going after a specific device that unfortunately i cannot name due to the disclosure policies but this device allowed me to be able to inject some html in there the first thing was to actually see what is the back end and even though it didn't say Chrome specifically for the name of it, the researcher who found this vulnerability, which I'll link in down below, they also mentioned that they have gone after not only Chrome, but a bunch of different browsers. So I thought to myself, maybe this also works for this one. And guess what? Exploring this exact vulnerability on that device worked and it got me that $20,000 bounty. Now let's talk about where this really gets fun electron apps and devices. Sometimes getting your payload to render in its environments is super easy. In electron apps, all you have to do is drop a hyperlink somewhere or just find an HTML injection. You might be able to just iframe your exploit directly into the app. Yes, this even works if you just iframe the SVG within an iframe. But sometimes it's not that easy. You'll hit a wall and realize that your exploit is opening in your native browser, the one that you use every day, and not the bundled browser inside of the app. Let's break these down really quick. Your native browser is just your Chrome, your Firefox, your Safari, whatever it is that you use normally for your day-to-day -day uses. But a lot of time, Electron apps ship with their own bundled version of Chrome, and that's what they use to display the UI. That's the one that you want to hit. So instead of thinking, can I just drop a hyperlink, start thinking like this. Can I inject something into an embedded HTML page? Can I just put custom HTML somewhere? Or can I mess with the style tag, close it early and sneak in HTML? Or even better, can I abuse the OAuth login flow to redirect through the bundled browser? A simple hyperlink or XSS isn't just always going to be the way in. You need to think in terms of how the application decides to use the internal browser and hijack that path. Now, when it comes down to devices, things are even trickier. In one of my own bounties, I found that the device wouldn't just let me open up the browser. It launched an internal browser when I clicked on the articles within the help section. That was the only window in. So I got creative. I clicked through the help docs until I landed on one of their marketing pages. From there, I found a way to get to YouTube, search for my own channel, and I put a link right at the top of one of my videos. So when I clicked it, the device would go to my site where the exploit was being hosted. And as soon as that happened, I was able to exploit it and exfiltrate data from that device and send it back to my server just like i showed you in the lab i know this exploit is old but like i mentioned earlier i've gotten bounties as late as december of last year and i haven't just looked for it recently but this vulnerability exists you just have to find ways to exploit it i know ssrfs are really really fun but you got to kind of think about ssrf differently you can find these same methods and the same concepts as ssrf on devices on your readers on your fridge or even go as far as electron apps and i've been doing that for the past year and it's been incredibly fun and it's given me some good research and find more vulnerabilities in so do me a favor if you haven't already if you like this video hit that like hit that subscribe button and become a new homie and obviously if you like content like this drop the word cve and i'll make more content like this in the upcoming weeks all right that's it i'll see you all in next week's video peace